It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movie, superheroes, and mayonnaise, apparently, so let's talk it all out. Uh, my name is Miracle Whip Chris. My name is <laughs> Mayo Mike, I guess. Yeah, Mayo Mike, it's got a nice <laughs> ring to it. But uh, this yeah. week, we've got our first look at Superman's new logo, Mike. And mm-hmm. I would have bet money. That would have been our thumbnail this week, but you surprised me, and I love what you pulled out. So um, <laughs> everyone else is done. So we're going to talk about Superman and James Gunn on social media as usual. More uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem sequel gets a, a release date, Mike. Confirmed release yeah. date. That's great. Not not the only turtle news this week. No, absolutely. I mean, with our with our list of show notes, like if you do the math, like it's like fifty percent turtles almost. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 there could be more. I, I think I, we might talk about more as we get to it, but we'll 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 bring it up as we want to get to it. We're uh, we have pulled up our Google Maps because we don't trust Apple Maps to get our directions to Jurassic City. And uh, you may be wondering, you're probably not wondering what that is because the logo gives it, or the the thumbnail gives it away. But the sequel to Jurassic World could possibly be titled Jurassic City, and we'll talk about all those fun little details uh, and more in the show today. All right, let's get into it, Chris. We started a conversation just before uh, we started uh, (laughs) recording. He comes at me with a loaded question. Like, he's like, all right, we're rolling. All right, so your phrase was, do you get mayonnaise ick? And I had. This, I've never heard of this <laughs> phrase before, so I had to have him repeat it and explain Man, it to okay. me. Okay, I, I have to. I have to say, somebody can enjoy mayonnaise as a condiment and still get mayonnaise ick, and that's where I'm at right now. I have two vivid examples to tell you about mayonnaise ick. The first one is is like back in the day. I want to say this was like early 2000s. Like uh, the uh, the Fox affiliate in our area aired a like food eating challenge this was like during the reality competition like craze i'm sure this was like buttoned up right up against like american idol where they bought like all these competitive eaters up on stage and they had to uh compete against like these like different um challenges and i remember one of them was it was like just five people up on stage and whoever could eat like the most jars of mayonnaise would be the winner and i was just like i was like dying i was like this is disgusting yeah like i enjoy mayonnaise on a sandwich on a burger but like the fact that somebody's just eating mayonnaise like makes me want to hurl and then more recently in the future we were at the grocery store and there was kind of like this cheese dip that was being sold in the deli and it was like something that you like dip crackers and it was kind of reminiscent of like a unformed cheese ball. Say, it sounds like a cheese, like a, like a cheese ball that is like more liquidy, like a little softer. Yeah. And it was just, ball. yeah. So like I start eating it and I'm like, Oh wow, this is pretty good. This reminds me of something, you know, I had back in the Midwest growing up. And did, then did silly you buy, me, did you buy this or was it like a sample thing? I, I, I bought it. Okay. And cool. it <laughs> came in, it came in one of those kind of like clear, like uh deli containers that, mm-hmm. you know, they, they printed a sticker to close it. Oh yeah. Uh, and then I look at the ingredients and this, cheese dip had like three ingredients it was like cheese mayonnaise and like seasoning you know and i was like i like my brain just immediately (laughs) ran to the ick because even though it tasted good ignorance was bliss and the fact that i learned that i was just dipping a cracker essentially into mayonnaise with some cheese in it like i was like no i threw it away i even like looked at my wife i was like i know no, this is silly. I know I just told you this tastes really good, but now that I know it's entirely mayonnaise, I cannot eat so, it. So I just so. imagine you, like the scene in, in Ace Ventura when he finds out that the police officer he kissed was a man and he went like uh, took a shower. Finkel uh, is Einhorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just imagine like you, you're like, you got the plunger on your mouth in the bathroom. You're in the shower crying, you know, at this revelation. Yeah, uh, it was bad. So uh, essentially, I asked Chris just nonchalantly, like, "Oh, do you have uh, mayonnaise ick?" And he, 
comes at me with the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, you would I, be eating those jars of mayonnaise. Look, if it was socially acceptable, I would entirely eat mayonnaise or Miracle Whip no. out of a jar. Uh, because it, and it's just I've got I've got a palate for it. I grew up here. Uh, no. It's not the south, but southern Indiana, Kentucky area. You know, coleslaw <laughs> is made with the mayonnaise, like the homemade mayonnaise. You're not pouring Miracle Whip in, in the coleslaw around here. I'll tell you that. But um, it just adds flavor to. I love it. Um, you know, to me, it's an important part of BLTs. You know, something I had for dinner earlier this week. Um, I don't know if you put that on your sandwich or not, but like, no, I, that, that's what I'm saying. If if the mayonnaise is like an ingredient or a mm-hmm. condiment, like not the volume right. of what I'm eating. Like I like I love me a BLT, man. If the mayonnaise is dripping out of it, oh yeah, I'll scoop that up. But like it psychologically, this is, this is, it has to wild. be an ingredient. I, I, to me, yeah. that's the same thing because I I'm it's absolutely. But I will tell you, there's one thing I put I put I will put Miracle Whip slash mayonnaise on that you may not think of, and oh, like God. and that I'm not is for this. no, it's fine. It's a grilled cheese. Um, a, 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 and, some and, lettuce and, and, and ma- mayonnaise on a gr- between a grilled cheese after you cook it. Okay, that's not that's not so crazy. I, yeah. I mean, have you heard have you heard of people replacing the butter and a grilled cheese with mayonnaise? Oh, absolutely. That's like yeah, a yeah. legit. And, and this is yeah, like I've one step before. from that, but I love the taste of the mayonnaise, the Miracle Whip. Yeah, this. I know. This is crazy. And the only reason I brought it up is because, uh, as listeners know, I think I've we brought this up plenty of other times. Like coming from the middle of the country, I am infatuated with ranch dressing. Which is a big mental hurdle for me because I can't know, I can't remind myself of how it's made because it's essentially mayonnaise, buttermilk, and seasoning. So yeah, you got the buttermilk in there to like, you know, at least thin out the definition of how much mayonnaise is in there. But like, uh, I I looked over to my wife the other day and I was like, can I just replace the mayonnaise with sour cream? I don't know how you feel about sour cream. I wouldn't eat it with a spoon out of a tub, but I'm much more comfortable with sour cream. Have, like, as, as a man who has eaten a spoon of sour cream out of a tub, Mike, there's just not a lot of flavor in there. Uh, it, it's not. It, it, you have to mix it with something. It just doesn't come naturally with much oh flavor God. to it. This, this is all coming kind of full circle. Like back back when we <laughs> highlighted the Shang Chi yeah. cake that we yeah. made yes, from the, the old peaches. vintage comic book cres- recipe. I like, yeah. God, I think that was like what a two years ago now it, 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 it you had liked years, it yeah. a lot yeah and i was just kind of like okay with it because it was just basically cream cheese on top of a pound yeah. cake i mean sour cream on top of a pound cake yeah. um all come in full circle okay yeah, yeah. anyway there's a long-winded way of saying uh just before the episode i made up some of my own homemade ranch and i just subbed the mayonnaise for sour cream so i'm good. pretty yeah. excited about yeah it. yeah i've heard i've heard i've heard that works out you know you get the powder mix put in sour cream now i want to tell you as someone who comes from a, a regionally similar area as you right mm-hmm. um i don't care for ranch i find it bland i i think oh I, I think gosh. ranch everyone's like you know what ranch, i don't care for ranch i don't care for blue cheese um i'm, I'm a spicy person i like i like a lot of flavors and fair. heat and, That's fair. and stuff like that so I, I lean opposite of ranch if you will but like they're yin and yang right like you have one you can mix them together um mm-hmm. i know what was it the kettle chips had the buffalo dip and ranch was it buffalo and ranch mixed together chips i believe that sounds for a little good bit? Um, yeah, they were okay. Didn't care for the range part of it. You know, it's just, that's how we, that's how I operate. So I, I mean, I understand like, um, I know like, I also like, we, I think I had this conversation earlier this week or maybe last week with somebody else, but like, uh, me, and I believe your wife as well. Uh, we taste the soap in cilantro. Um, you know, when we have, oh, yeah. and that's a, that's a genetic component. Yeah. So sure. like, you know, I, I don't do cilantro on everything. Everyone looks at me like I'm, you know, blasphemous. I'm like, I, I, I can't help it. It's not. It's not something I can do. So I don't think it's tied to that necessarily, but you know, the, the flavor palettes to each and of their own, you know, it's, it's like, wow. it's like movies or, you know, maybe you're a fan of Madam web. Um, uh, maybe that's your palette. You know, maybe, maybe that's your mayonnaise. Uh, but really, no, Madam web, <laughs> Madam web is my ick for so, 100%. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, it's funny, but you know, before we can get here, uh, local news, uh, a semi driver drove over a bridge in Louisville, uh, to where oh it was literally God. the truck was hanging over it and the cab was hanging from the truck. It did not fall in the river somehow, Mike. Like, if that's not the not. best advertisement for a trailer hitch company I've ever seen, I don't know what is. Chris, you really missed out on an opportunity. If you just would have sent me just the image alone and not the link to the article and told me this was, like, set footage from, like, <laughs> Venom or something like that, I would have 100% believed you. You are yeah. totally right. This looks exactly straight out of, like, a Spider-Man, a Spum there, movie, it if looks you will. stage <laughs> because, like, nothing... The, the 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 driver she is fine they were able to rescue her with the fire and rescue her by rappelling off the bridge nobody was hurt um at least you know 
horribly uh, that I know of. No one died. Uh, and the way this thing is dangling looks staged. It looks like you couldn't have planned it more perfectly to be the, the truck up in the trailer uh, or the, the, the truck up in the bridge things, this, this truck hanging over, the rescue footage of the people like coming down to get her. It looks like a movie scene. Right, like right, yeah. like identical. So it's wild to me that this yeah. happened on the only non toll bridge uh, in, in, in <laughs> between Louisville and Indiana. I put a link in the in the show notes because I don't want people to miss yeah. out on the. It's just so it's cine, it's so cinematic. Yeah. Like I really wish superheroes existed so I could just kind of like see all the TikToks. Yeah. Of people I, on the bridge recording a spider person I, swinging at the same right. day. Yeah, well, it's also the worst part about this is this is Louisville, so it would have been like you know again, um, you know, Dollar General Spider Man coming to get it. You know, we're not New York; it, we don't have real it would problems. Have, it would have been like uh, Shazam adjacent because yeah. I just think of more of like an industrial city, kind of like Philadelphia, kind of matching the bridge it's aesthetic some, in this photo. Yeah, someone's playing "I Need a Hero." She's she was listening to that in the semi, and that's what distracted her. She drove off. <laughs> And Shazam yep, catches it, it. So, so absolutely. But um, yeah, I, I, again, we, we joked about it on our chat. Like if they fell in the Ohio River, what powers would they get? And it would not be anything good. It would not be anything fun. <laughs> it would not be spider powers. Would it be future prescient powers? It would be, you know, just, hey, you've, you've got cancer. Uh, that's your power all of a sudden. <laughs> so, um, but thankfully no one's hurt. No one fell in the water. It's, it's all good. But boy, what an adventure yesterday was whenever someone told me that was happening. And I just did. I didn't believe it. I just didn't believe it. So. Well. Obviously, uh, this is proof uh, right here that you are not super powered in any way. You did not suit up. You're no. not going and save the day. We are nothing but armchair quarterbacks when it comes to superheroing. That's, that's, that, is, that is correct. We we can sit here and tell you what you should have done all day long. I was it um, Captain Hindsight? Wasn't that his name in, in that South Park episode? He had the power of I think, I think power so, yeah. twenty twenty uh, yeah. vision, and he's like, "You shouldn't have done that." I'm like, yes, thank you, Captain Hindsight, but. Anyway, well, Chris, yes, let's, let's you know get something else that takes all day long is three hour run times of movies. Yes, especially when there's like two of them to watch one one whole story. But uh, last week, you know, we, we kind of mentioned we recorded a little early. Uh, Mike was, was was nice enough to let me do that so I could go watch Dune Part Two, uh, the fan screening um, at the local theater. Uh, got there. Uh, boy, what a very understaffed theater on a Sunday evening. You don't really expect a lot of people at the movies. Um, but it was very understaffed. But I will tell you, uh, we had a full full house there at the IMAX screening for, for Dune Part 2. Every other person had that damn sandworm popcorn bucket. Like, they were selling it there. They had it out on the, the counters. People were just buying them up to take with them as they, they went into the theater. So um, it's going to be popular. Probably not very scarce. So if you're looking to get one, you can probably get one. But um, I, I, I'm going to, you know, I have Dune Part 1 is a great film. It is very well done, very well told story. Even if you've not read the book, it's still great. Dune Part 2 uh, will not convert you if you didn't like Part 1. It is an exact continuation of Part 1 uh, with the quality, the the characters, the, the cinematography, the story, everything just, it, it just continues. Like if you were to watch it one go, you wouldn't think it was two movies, right? Uh, at, at this rate. So I, I got to give it credit to that. So if you love Doom part one, you're gonna love Doom part two. Uh, I will say some of the things that, you know, Mike, for, for people who don't know the story and who, you know, haven't seen the, the movies uh, so far, probably like yourself, right? I don't think you've watched the first one yet, right? Mm-mm, have not uh, yet. Um, I, I will say, you know, the story focuses on Paul Atreides played by Timothy Chalamet. Uh, and you know his characters around him, including um, Zendaya uh, Shani and uh, the the Fremen people. Uh, so a lot of the characters you see in the trailer are like the stars. They don't get as much screen time as you would think, um, but that's also part of the story. Like you don't go elsewhere. So if you're looking to you know catch um, you know three and a half hours of like Leah Seydoux's character or. Uh, you know, even uh, what's the Austin Butler? He's not in a, the whole movie, right? Uh, so you know, you're you might be more disappointed going into this based on the advertising. But overall, I, I think Dune Part One and Part Two will go down as um, I hate the word classic, but like cinematic art for the the 2020s, if you will. Uh, the, the That's 20s. good to hear. Well, I mean, I was going to ask you because one of the things that has kept me from indulging in this franchise of the biggest feedback that came back from part one, mm -hmm. that it was a part one. It was, you did not get a conclusion of a story out of this. And if you wanted the full narrative, you're going to need to watch both parts. So I keep seeing headlines of like a third 
art, you know, in development with the script. And you've brought up in the past on the show that there's other material out there in the universe and other books. Yep. So it seems like the the franchise might be continuing, but has this story kind of concluded in part two? Do we have like an ending to look forward to? Yeah. If I do a back to back. Yeah, yeah. I would say it, it ends well more definitively than the first one does. The first one is yeah. like, hey, you're, you're getting hyped for this. This one really takes, you know, if they did the whole movie one, the whole book in one movie, you wouldn't get this. There's a lot of conflict about what it is to be Timothy Chalamet's character and the people and the the galactic, uh, I guess, empire and politics. Very Game of Thronesy. If you're a Game of Thrones person, you, you, you're absolutely going to love these two movies back to back. Now, there are, like again, about 20 books in the Dune franchise uh, that span thousands and thousands of years. This one is still the first book. The third, or the third movie should be the second book, which t- picks up right after this. Um, but they, they do. There are some changes to the material for the movie that wouldn't make sense if you read the books, like, you know, things um, uh, in, in the book don't make sense when you watch the movie. It'd be very, very hard to get into. Very, very weird, abstract stuff. So they've made some changes towards the, well, I guess the whole movie, but more towards the end to kind of fit the the theme and, and keep everything, hey, this is more about, I wouldn't say realism, but like it keeps it grounded. Whereas the other book gets real wild, real freaky. Um <laughs> Oh, uh, one of the books, one of the dudes turns into a sandworm with like a human face, like down, like down the, <laughs> down the, the, the novel series, like way, way down the river. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I, I think there, there is a good ending for this, but it definitely leaves room for that second book, uh, third movie to take place without it feeling kind of shoved in there. Right. Like, Oh, we need to make mm-hmm. another sequel because it was popular. No, they, it feels like they've got it ready to go if they want to. That answer your question? Yeah, fantastic. And there are also no post credit scenes, so you don't need to worry about those gotcha. um, at all. But absolutely, had a, had a good time. Absolutely, uh, uh, would would recommend to anyone. But I would also say again, thankfully, I watched part one before we went into part two because they do not give you a recap <laughs> of anything. They're just like, <laughs> hey, boom, we're we're rocking and rolling on that. Um, the other flip side of that coin is um, I've I've owned, but I've not had a chance to. Um, play is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, Mike, have you ever played Final Fantasy VII for PS1? So I played the original in its entirety uh, back when I was like a brudgeoning teen. Mm -hmm. I think I had a... I either had a physical walkthrough with me or I had just gotten to the internet and I was on forums and I was trying to like men and max materia. I got way too into the weeds uh, with it. And then... When the remake started coming out, I played a little bit of it where I beat like one and a half bosses and then it just got really complex and I moved on to other things. So mm-hmm. I played, I played, yeah, I have like an experience on both of them. Okay, great. Cause I never played Final Fantasy VII uh, at all, the original one. So mm-hmm. I, I skipped it. I started with eight as about the time I had a PlayStation. So I'm very familiar with Final Fantasy VIII, seven, not so much. So I have no, um, affinity for the original if you will kind of we talked about that baggage the mm-hmm. way like the, you know the the nostalgia i don't have that for this so i was able to jump in the remake and i played the demo on my playstation 4 when it came out but i bought the um was it the playstation 5 upgrade for this later mm-hmm. when it came out so i've been playing on my playstation 5 um and i'm having a good time my cat is just having a blast <laughs> i love it me. i love uh, it <laughs> she heard us talking about mayonnaise got hungry um oh god <laughs> but uh final fantasy remake to me it's you know it's a third person you, you're controlling cloud you have the ability to use other characters in battle i will tell you my fingers uh aren't jiving with the l1 r1 R l2 r2 things because sometimes it's run and sometimes it's like action when you're in battle like the controller changes depending on what you're doing so i haven't really got that down yet so i feel a little goofy but thankfully um, like the classic Final Fantasies, when you want to control another character or tell them to do something, the action pauses. So you're not like getting whipped, like your ass isn't getting whipped mm-hmm. in real time while you're trying to figure out what's going on. So I can always just, hey, pull up that menu real fast. I don't have to stress about it. I can choose what I want and go back into the, the live action scenes where I'm controlling either, um, you know, so far Barrett or Cloud, right? The, the, mm-hmm. the two characters. One's got guns, one's got swords. Which one do you prefer? So I, I, I'm not, you know, as familiar with Materia. I haven't got a summons yet, but um, looking forward to it. Now everyone might know, you know, hey, Chris, why are you playing this game all of a sudden, you know, three, four years later? 
Well, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the second in this remaster or remake trilogy, came out this week uh, on February 29th. So I was like, okay, this is a great opportunity to visit this because if I do enjoy this game, and I can go get into to Rebirth, but if you have a save file for remake or intermission, you get um, summoning materia for the new one. So you can get Leviathan or somebody else in the Rebirth game when you start off uh, right away. Yeah. So this this is... This is the part of the video game industry, especially out of Japan, where it starts to kind of lose me as a more casual player because I've already like lost the, the thread of all this. Like this must mm -hmm. be what it feels like to kind of be a normal person experiencing like the MCU. You know, we are plugged into it. We know the timelines. We know when things are coming out. We know when things are canceled and stuff. But like to me, Final Fantasy VII used to just be one video game. Like, it came in, like, four different discs because yeah. the install was so, so big. Well, I guess you technically weren't installing You're anything. You were reading the disc, moving yeah. moving on from one disc to another. Um, but now that there's a second part, I the, the answer I want to know is, well, how many parts do they plan to Three. make to finish out the entirety? They, they've which, said it's a trilogy, me, which is good. Which, to me, is pretty wild because when you play the original game, like, right now, Chris, you are, in an, you are entrenched in that, like, you were entrenched in that city. Um, you were like in Mid the depths Midgar? of it. Is there something like uh, that? Yeah. Like, you know, you're even on some of the outskirts, some like the cities yeah. around it, right? In the original video game, Midgar is just like the first like Level. like little world. Like yeah. uh, once you kind of beat the main boss there, you you move outside of it. You you approach an entire continent. You're yeah. all over the map. You're you're in wilderness, you're riding chocobos, like you you go to like you sail across the sea to like a casino city like and so it's so crazy that like the first part like so much of it is just entrenched in midgar which I don't necessarily think it's bad like the gameplay is very interesting and the the, the escape is very beautiful but like to me it's like how do they fit all of that they in yeah the three parts if like they haven't even moved out of midgar yet so like. so my understanding um from this is that and they they alluded to early on that there are um essentially time something has happened and we are in an alternate reality compared to the original final fantasy seven. Uh, and okay. there are uh, what I, I look like. I mean, remember the flash TV show had those phantoms. Like when he changed time, they chased him around. Like um, they wanted to correct the timeline or whatever. The wraith mm -hmm. flash. It's like the, these rates that only the characters who are involved in this can see. Um, I, I know there's a character called, I, I'm on, I know Sephiroth. I know he's a villain. He has appeared to be in vision several times, but it hasn't explained to me why he's in my visions yet. Um, just that I have a history with him, but we're very, like, I'm still like, I just met it. You know, at, uh, my first vision, big vision with him. I just met Aerith. Well, in the real games, my understanding is you don't meet Sephiroth until you're out of Midgar, right? Like, and, and like you fight him much later in the game. Um, uh, or like at least, you know, the second quarter so i again i i don't understand i i don't know how big the first one is but boy they have really there's a lot of like hey talking walking down a train talking to people on a train which i assume in playstation one era was just hey you get on the train and then you get off the train but they actually expand the train ride into an actual ride with conversation pieces to build out the world yeah. and the characters a little more they're definitely fleshing out more and the combat's really intense too i remember like one of the first boss fights, you're fighting like a big robot that I think shoots fire at you. Yeah. And you're just getting a handle of like swapping between players and, mm -hmm. oh, switching over to the range character when you need to do range attacks and the other way around. And I remember th these boss battles take a long time. Like yeah. you, like you can't just beat a boss real quick, even if like you know exactly what to do. Like it is like a, an exercise and endurance. Which I actually think is kind of a cool gameplay mechanic of just like uh, most video games. I feel like I'm squatting on potions. I'm sitting on like revives and Phoenix downs and stuff like I only use them in emergency. But like I remember in the remake, I was playing like, oh, no, I am emptying out my entire inventory just to beat a boss. And I yeah. actually think that's. Yeah, they, they, when it says a boss battle, you're getting a boss battle is my experience on that first one, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've not gotten enough to fight the second one yet, but like you are, it is not like, oh, you're going to go up here. Oh, did you beat, did you over level yourself? Because you can't over your level yourself because there's no extra people to kill, right? Like you have to to do things in the moment and stay alive. And um, I think he, he was like, he has like a tail laser like the that, that robot did. So you had to hide behind the stuff and... Sometimes I wouldn't hide in time because I'm like, I don't know what dash is right now because boy, I feel goofy playing with this controller. 
Uh, so absolutely. I, I remember I was like, man, I'm going to probably, one of these dudes is going to die and I'm going to have to revive him <laughs> and figure out how to beat it. But uh, we, we were able to get through, but I, I'm enjoying the world of Final Fantasy VII for the first time, Midgar, the Mako Reactor, um, just just learning kind of about it as I go and not having, like, you know, the, the memories or the history that, the, that you do of, like, oh, to me, I would never know Midgar is just the first level and then you get bigger. To me, that is the game, right, for mm-hmm. for now. So um, I, I am enjoying that, and it just looks good. They, again, Square Enix, when they make a Final Fantasy game, whether it's good or bad, it's just a beautiful game. Uh, through and through and and it, i've not had any issues or stutters so i i do i do enjoy that and the one thing i do uh also enjoy about this mike and i i, I preach this you know over and over again single player story no shop no you know um you know i guess cosmetic dlc you get the you get the game you play the game and that's what it is right i think it's that's just that's a fantastic. video game <laughs> yeah and 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 there's Come nothing on. else to it we're like old men shouting at clouds. <laughs> yeah. Right. It, well, I don't have to worry. Is is the servers online to play this? No, I don't have to worry about. Am I online? I no, I can play offline with it because literally it doesn't require an internet connection to work. Uh, so that's always a plus. Now, mind you, I still play my online games all the time. But like, if this has been a really, really, um, I wouldn't say relaxing, but it's definitely good to branch out here. Right. It's springtime. I want to get out of my house, but I can't get out of my house because the weather wants to fluctuate from you know snowing to sunny so i've got to sit in and do something so to get new scenery mike i've been playing final fantasy 7 remake but you are um catching up on some old stuff here you you are in the opposite i'm on the the cusp of today and now and you're like well maybe maybe i'll catch up yeah. on some stuff which is typical fashion it seems like on this show yeah uh the wife and i finally uh watched oppenheimer last night it got to a point where we kind of needed to like plant a flag and say we're watching it tonight because similar to dune it's a three Mm. hour runtime so this isn't something we can kind of casually put on we had to make plans yeah i was gonna say you you need to pay attention to it as well like it's not like yes uh, i'm gonna be working out and watching oppenheimer probably doesn't work for (laughs) yeah exactly and it's always fun you know to watch uh well fun might not be the the exact right word but it's nice to kind of settle in and watch like an auteur film from a filmmaker that you know constantly puts out quality work, even if uh, you don't end up enjoying the story sometimes, like Tenet with me, at least you know you're kind of seeing like high level filmmaking. Um, so it's always kind of exciting knowing like, oh, at least I'm going to be pleased in some way. Uh, uh, Oppenheimer was like incredibly dense. Like, uh, I was surprised with how frenetic it was for such a, I don't want to say, like, typical story, but, like, we're not talking about high-concept science fiction. This is essentially, like, a biopic of Oppenheimer. And, like, man, you your your brain just not does not get a second to relax until, like, uh, they cut and go to the next scene, the next location, the next exterior, the next character, the next... Um, you know, interrogation room, you're going from one to another. So I, that pacing really keeps your interest and is entirely yeah. essential for a three hour runtime movie. You know, uh, it seems strange that the, the, maybe the, the meter for success now is, is your movie interesting enough to keep me from picking up my phone? Uh, just be not because I don't think movies are interesting anymore. It's just like, we're all addicted addicted to these other screens and you always just want to check oh let me just see if anything else is going on uh but yeah this held my uh interest and i learned a lot (laughs) i wasn't Mm. expecting it to be so educational right i didn't really know much about oppenheimer i didn't know anything about the um the cabinet confirmation hearing portion of his history so yeah Yeah, the second second half of his career if you will yeah exactly yeah so if you want to learn a ton about oppenheimer because i saw in the credits that this was based on a, a a book because the whole time I'm just going like, there's no way no one just knows all of this stuff about Robert Oppenheimer. And then, mm-hmm. and then, oh, he's adapting a book. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. But now yeah, it was, it was yeah. good. Like it's, it's weird. I wouldn't say like I'm head over heels for the movie. It was just a good movie. I know yeah. it was nominated uh, for a lot, and I haven't seen a lot of the Best Picture nominees. So I'm kind of curious to see now what else is out there in the field. I need to plant some more flags before the Oscars come up, which I think is soon within the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I know. Um, I keep getting the uh, AMC ads. You know, uh, the uh, the awards movies are showing um, mm-hmm. at, at the theater. I think they even had a, a thing up when I was there for 
for Dune. So, um, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's that time of year to catch those. Yeah. One thing that was really nice is we watched it on uh, Peacock and I was, I was not going to watch it on Peacock if I was going to have to deal with ads throughout the movie. But luckily I think they kind of know based on like the, the popular popularity and proximity of the movie to the Academy and everything like that. Uh, all you have to do is watch a couple commercials before the movie and then it's commercial three all the way through but we have that paid tier that also has ads in it, so I don't know how it operates on some of the other tiers. Uh, uh, but yeah, that's uh, I guess that's my uh, yeah. PSA to go watch Oppenheimer before it's uh, too late. Uh, and then Chris, you shocked me when you told me that this was over a decade old. Yeah, I didn't so even know. so Mike's <laughs> about to talk about a video game that came out with the Wii U. Like I literally had this game for the Wii U, um, and we bought a Wii U. Uh, my wife and I, when we were dating, so we could play this very specific game because of how yeah, this... how fun it is. Actually, this is probably one of my favorite games, um, even casual. Uh, and we have it for the Switch now as well, which I assume that's what you played it on. Um, yeah, I've been playing on a Switch. I uh, I borrowed it from my neighbor across the street, uh, technically from his uh, son. So uh, thank you mm-hmm. to Dex, who lives off across the street, for letting me borrow his video game. Yeah, I was chatting with him, and I was like, I kind of want to play a Mario game. Yeah. But Mario games, to their credit i guess never drop in value used it, it almost yeah. seems like they cost more money if they're used because they're so hard to find so i was like i don't really feel like dropping like 60 bucks on like a mario game right now so like yeah. oh we got a couple of them so uh i borrowed super mario 3d world which is if yeah. you if you don't keep track of the lineage of mario games that's the one where you turn into a cat yes so cat that's mario. how i remember which one this is and it's kind of fun playing it because it is this mixture between the 2D gameplay and the 3D gameplay. Uh, now, I haven't played the newest game, which is Wonder, but based on the trailers that I've seen for it, Wonder seems very much rooted in 2D so side scrolling. Mario alternate. So, just so you know, Mario alternates between 3D and 2D. After this was the new Super Mario Brothers, which was a, a 2D side scroller. Then Odyssey uh, for the Switch is a, an open world 3D world one. Yeah. And then back to um, the uh, Wonder, which is in fact uh, two dimensional. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Um, or side scroll. So, yeah. so three D world is really fun. I love being a, um, I love being a cat. I love going kind of back to this magical like pick up and put down oh, yeah. world where I don't have to entrench myself into anything. Uh, it's super easy to pull up a second controller, and my wife can play a world with me, and she can dip in and out if she wants. I like that you can change characters on the fly. Mm-hmm. That's fun. But one thing that is really, really difficult, and I don't understand if I'm going to get better at this the more I play the game. I'm like, I'm on the third world already, and I feel like I still haven't gotten a handle of this, is fucking smashing blocks. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to do in a three-dimensional world because they're they're affixed very much to a singular plane, and like you really have to make sure you're under them. Like Sometimes I think I'm under a block, and I jump. Oh, I missed it. Okay, let me move a little bit. No, I missed it, and now I'm on the other side. No, now I'm in front of it. So uh, sometimes getting those block hits is infuriating enough to make me not want to play the game. So uh, I don't know if other people are better better at getting on it, but it is fun being the cat. So that's enough to kind of yeah. get me over well, the, the hump a little bit. The power ups are great. You can the fact you can have one in storage as well, right? Like you you have mm. one power up in storage. There's the cat, which is the funny because it's a little bell, like for the collar. Mm, um, yeah. Every character has a cat version of themselves, so it's not just Mario. Everyone has a cat suit with their the colors. Um, I love I love the Captain Toad levels. Those yes. are so much fun. That, I would just play an entire Captain Toad game. They did. They came out with a game, Captain Toad's Treasure oh. Tracker. Uh, which I want to play that. <laughs> which was for Wii U and Switch. So you, it's actually on Switch, so you can get that one. Uh, and yeah. so it's a whole, whole world uh, game dedicated to that. Um, you, the, the fun part is going back, getting the secrets, getting all the, is it the star, the hidden stars, right? The green stars, yeah. I believe going back and seems unlocking to be, those seems to be three green stars per level. And like it, one thing that Mario has always been amazing at is teaching the player how to play the game. Like those first couple levels are always just like so easy. And you think, Oh, this game is going to be a cakewalk. Then you start to get a couple more levels in. You're like, oh, okay. I'm starting to see how they're cranking up yeah. the difficulty now. Now I ta- now I'm not getting three stars regularly every time. I have to hunt down these other ones. So. Oh yeah, My, yeah. Well, that's just a shout out of me yeah. being far behind playing old Mario games. Yeah. So uh, oh, it's a great. <laughs> stay well, tuned. Here, here's the here's the thing I want to tell you, Mike. Um, as a, as a parent to be, Mario is the games that brings everyone together, right? 
uh, kids of all ages you give them a little control you give them a controller you're playing with them you know it there's low stakes in mario right uh you know there's no real game over you just have to start the world over sometimes so um yeah, absolutely you're going to be playing a lot more mario games kind of going forward <laughs> so so buckle up for that but uh, but absolutely I, I i can second super mario 3d world and then i believe the one you have has is it bowser's fury is attached to that as yeah, well. Yeah, I don't. What is that? That's, Explain to me. Should I play that right after? Or? Yeah, that's essentially. Um, it, it's not DLC. They never released it for the Wii U, but it's extra content they created for the Switch, uh, version. So you actually have some extra extra content to play uh, with Bowser's Fury in that regard. So. Um, okay, so it's like an it's like an additional game. Yeah, it, because it's, on I, the boot screen it tells me to pick one or the other. It's yeah, not like it pretty it's pretty much. Yeah, it, it's it's not in, okay. it's not integrated into the other game. It's a separate game if you will um similar to uh, i don't know i can't think of something that i would do it but like um it, it is a different game but you it picks up the quote unquote, story or you know plot from world oh, okay. if you will so um, that's that's good okay yeah. it that just add, it adds value when they re-release a game for wii u to switch that they just had to put burn to an sd card pretty much because it plays and looks the same but but absolutely i, I I saw that there's a new um, Princess Peach game yes. that just came out where it you is. just play as Peach, and she gets to try on these different costumes, and she gets those powers. Like you can be like a ninja and stuff. That looks fun. Yeah. I kind of want to play that. Yeah, Princess Peach Showtime comes out uh, at the end of this month, actually, and she has like a, a Sherlock suit and like, um, like a yeah, like you mentioned, a cowboy suit. I think as well. Like a there's like a sword, a fencing suit uh, based on it. So I think that's pretty cool that she's getting her own game and. And has those abilities to do that in there. And I believe, um, correct, uh, someone else correct me if I'm wrong, Mario versus Donkey Kong, which we talked about a couple, I would say month or two months ago, uh, which is a remaster of the 3DS one, is now out on Switch as well. So uh, if you're a Mario fan, this is this is your month right here. This is your, your time to be playing yeah, Mario. So many Mario things in my life. Yes. Okay, so uh, because the show notes are light this week folks that's why we're taking so long on all this other stuff including mayonnaise uh we're gonna jump into the the actual superhero news and we're gonna start with um you know not really i'm, I'm no longer surprised when james gunn posts anything he's not surprising me anymore i'm just like oh like another thing that should probably be a press release that we're getting on social media um and that is james gunn has revealed the superman logo because everyone has to know what the the, the s is is going to be on a suit and that the title has changed from Superman Legacy. Um, rather than that, it is now just called Superman uh, for 2025, Mike. Uh, despite the fact, yet like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, he shared a post with a script that said Superman Legacy on it. They've they've changed their name just to Superman. So um, looking at this logo, a couple things. We talked about this off the air. Number one, it's, it's the S from Kingdom Come. I don't know if you know that. The, 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 the logo is from the Kingdom Come Superman which was actually worn by Brandon Ruth in uh, that was at crisis on infinite earths crossover on the Arrowverse, mm-hmm. where he return to Superman. But this has yellow instead of black. And then you called out, um, you point out there's snow all over this as well. And um, to me, that indicates the fortress of solitude, which is in the snow. Uh, you think it could be frost breath. Uh, could literally be I, anything. I, I, I want to say for the record, your idea makes much more sense yeah. uh, because like, <laughs> I don't think Frost Breath is just going to make snow that falls on him necessarily. But it does make me think, out of all the Superman movies we've had in recent history, Frost Breath is usually not highlighted in any way. We get the laser beam vision, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like if Gunn kind of wanted to make a a more modern, unique statement, you know, throw in some Frost Breath for us, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Um, Showcase the powers because he's not new for the first time, right? This Superman is supposed to have existed. He's not learning his powers as we go. He should have some powers. I think the title change makes sense. You know, he's trying to reboot and restart and reignite an entire uh, movie studio. So putting legacy in the title, it just gives me kind of feelings of Superman Returns, Mm -hmm. right? Or like, okay, the, the semicolon titled Superman movie didn't really work. Uh, previously and we they already did the alternate of like man of steel kind of like well we're not going to actually use the character's name we're going to use the other moniker so going back to superman i mean that makes sense uh so uh i guess we'll get our our subtitle in this whatever next sequel they make for superman 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I don't I don't think if, I think if you check Superman Returns wasn't a semicolon, but it just had an extra on it, right? Like um I think the like Batman Returns was it was an homage to Batman Returns, it was Superman Returns, but that's fine. It, you know, it wasn't for everybody, but you know, Superman they're filming it now. This is here. There was some AI generated quote unquote set photos based on this and everyone was like, "Oh, it's the whole suit." It wasn't the suit. It was it's very much AI, so you can check that and turn that down if you want but overall you know um cool right it looks like it's actually happening mike that's i guess that's always our thing when people can talk a lot about projects or or, or things especially at warner brothers and then they never see the light of day uh mm -hmm. so this is good to know that they are out there filming it uh and doing that one of the things somebody called out here uh is that in man of steel uh his suit is kryptonian right of, of has that kryptonian texture and that this has more earth stitching and patterning to it um, as well. So it looks like it might be um, a an earth-made suit. I don't know if he's making them himself or someone's giving them to him. But um, do you think we'll get a suit origin, as always, in this movie? Or he's he just going to start with I, it? Do we, do we think the S is going to stand for hope? Is that what uh -huh. we're getting at here? Like, do we need that explanation all over it? Um I, I mean, I, I always hem and haw over the existence of superhero suits. I just want them to make yeah. sense. Uh, so, uh, I, to me, the, Gun, I hope, I hope you wrote a wow. nice scene in there that explains why he dresses like so, he does. The one thing is, I will say, of, of the Kingdom Come logo in this one, is it's not a direct S. It looks like a big, like a, a wide stroke across a uh, diamond crest, if you will. Um, because it, it has like the tiny top and the tiny bottom. It kind of blends into it. So... I'd be interested to see if it is an S or if it is supposed to be, as you mentioned, something else along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so, but anyway, you can check that out. We have, we have linked that here to the Instagram post in our show notes on the video game kick, because you know, occasionally we get in a bunch of video game stuff, uh, good or bad. Um, the Mandalorian video game we talked about a couple weeks ago has uh, been canned. Uh, already EA has laid off, I think at least 5% of their workforce, including com Com yeah, confirming themselves they have scrapped the Star Wars first person shooter game which we had uh, pretty pretty solid rumors on that it was going to be the Mandalorian based game however they will continue working on titles that have uh, proven successful uh, including the, the Jedi like Fallen Order um, titles if you will so yeah I mean <laughs> they. I think the the part of the news here is that they said EA is leaning away from doing licensed content, yep. uh, which is weird because when I think of EA, I only exclusively think of licensed content. So I don't know exactly. I'm sure. Do, do they do in Assassin's Creed or am I thinking no, of that's Ubisoft? Somebody else. Okay. So I don't even know what EA does. I'm sure somebody could tell me and I'd be like, okay, that EA makes sense. EA Sports. I think it's of, in the game. That's yeah, all I got. I think of all of the licensed sports game. I think all of the licensed uh, Star Wars or just other IP that they've created. So I'm like, what is left if they don't do um ip i mean this you're seeing this across like so many different industries right now of just contraction of everyone thought the behavior that people had during the pandemic was just going to persist forever and everyone was always going to be at home playing video games yeah. uh which is kind of silly to think that that was going to happen so i'm kind of curious is this contraction just more of a um, stabilization to back what well, it was like in 2019 or are they trying to totally pivot their entire company well, to just i don't know microtransactions and an original ip so i will say right now this is a a microcosm of the video games slash tech industry as a whole mike you probably see the titles everywhere right like mm -hmm. tech industry is laying off video game industry is laying off you know the pandemic we all played video games How, you and me we played call of duty i don't think i've played call of duty since the world opened back <laughs> up um yep. kind of thing like we we sat down we played a lot of video games we had a lot of fun but when everything kind of came out, you know, people aren't relying on video games for entertainment. And I, I went into, I just pulled up um, their uh, uh, EA's Wikipedia page, and they don't have a lot of games. But they had, starting in 2016, an EA Originals label. And there's, may, there's maybe a dozen games in here, man. Like, like, it's not a lot of original titles. So, like, for them to say we're leaning away from licensed titles, maybe they're licensing less titles because... That's going to bring us into the next topic here, and I'm just going to, we can lump this all in together, yeah. is that the Iron Man and Black Panther games that EA has announced, they're going to continue working on those. Like, literally, despite saying they're getting away from licenses, they are still maintaining big licenses, right, across the board. So, I, 
I can't. I I don't I don't know if I believe them, but like the only games I can see of um in here of on on the EA original games is like do you remember the game It Takes Two? Have you heard of it? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's in there, and uh, Unravel and Unravel Two. But everything else, I don't I don't know these games, Mike. And I'm a gamer. Like I'm not a casual gamer. I play a lot of games, and I don't know these originals, so I don't know how they can lean on these. Uh, even for, I guess, if you would say, uh, micro transactions, because I just don't see the games. I mean, that much does does EA have their own Fortnite? Like, what is their like online metaverse world that they have? Um, I don't. Is is it like Valorant or like what is? Uh, I, oh, like I'm like sure a, they, like a I'm free to play sh- kind of game. Um, yeah, I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have one. I just don't know what it is. I don't see. I don't, it. I don't, I don't see any in here. Um, kind of going. But I mean, this. like, and if that's not the case, those are the massive money makers. Like that yeah. is where you radically transform the balance sheets of your company. So maybe that's their strategy of they, like they, let's kind of refocus some of these teams on something that we own this, entirely. So they don't. So a lot of these again, I'm like, um, you know, uh, soccer, NHL, uh, UFC, WRC. Uh, the sims they own the sims probably um f1 super mega baseball um ea sports like i don't see any games other than sports in here uh under ea i will say i believe they do battlefield would be they they, that would be their closest mainline competitor but battlefield has not done well since this last launch uh the game had 2042 did not do very well so I believe they are kind of uh, up up in the air on that. I see um, Dragon Age games that are upcoming. Uh, f- skate. You yeah, listen skate to us games? trying to yeah. trying to dissect EA over here. Um, but like like but, uh, yeah. when I associate EA with something, it's not it, like I don't even associate EA with Star Wars. I associate Respawn, which is a subsidiary of EA, of course. But when I think of EA, I only think of EA Sports. It's in the game. That's literally all I think of. And that yeah. might be I mean who I am and how we grew up with that slogan everywhere. But like where where like you mentioned, where is your free to play shooter looter whatever it is Take yeah where's your where's your you know where's the your money maker that brings in the the whales i mean iron man and black panther to me it, it just seems like those aren't on the chopping block because they're just too far into development yeah and maybe um i think the it was a mandalorian gear- game is just not as far and they could you know yeah, axe yeah. it earlier i think i think also marvel games are you're gonna get your return on a marvel game regardless like you know um have you know i know the avengers game didn't do good it made its money back in sales but it as a live service game which is where they put their their investment it didn't return live service right no one's buying skins no one's buying that stuff for that game but these single player games tend to be selling pretty well like even final fantasy rebirth um you know a lot of single player games are are pushing that uh down the road so hopefully they can do that but maybe their whales are the sports games because sports games they may really say new version but most of those are like hey download this new team download this new update or like download these packs for the care the every year rather than release a, a yearly version if you will now if i could replace my entire team with the avengers and i could have like thor like throwing hail marys and uh, t'challa could catch it in the end zone yeah. then maybe i'd finally pick up oh, a you copy NFL of blitz. madden you nfl blitz is what you <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah but i mean this does make me a little bit nervous for the iron man and black panther game right because if we know that they don't have a commitment to these licensings going forward i could imagine them like not accommodating like re- resource requests from these teams that are making these games right you know they're not necessarily going to want to p- intentionally put out garbage right they want to make money from what they've already paid for licensing right yeah. but like w- are they going to go the extra mile and create interesting like dlc you know like from soft is doing with like the new elden ring dlc mm-hmm. coming out like n- no i can't imagine that they're going to be interested in that but I could see them changing their mind if, like, this Iron Man or Black Panther game comes out, everybody is in love with right. it, say it's better than Insomniac Spider-Man. I could see them going, oh, okay, no, 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 we'll, we'll keep this yeah. going. This is fine. Yeah. We'll we'll keep this part of the company going with licensing, but everywhere else will be cut. So, what, I don't know. Video game yeah. world is so crazy because the timelines are so long. It, right. It's insanely Tr- expensive. Trends Delays change. happen all the time. Like, like yes. gaming trends change so quickly as well. Like, what, uh, you know, what we were playing 
six years ago, Mike, is not what we're playing today, right? Like, you know, the trends change, people change. You know, um, you know, Fortnite's still here, but it's evolving. Uh, you know, that's that's a game that evolves. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, Call of Duty Warzone is not, to me, is it's not on the top of, like, the, the articles I'm looking at all the time. So I, I am interested to see how this evolves. I think, you know, for them, uh, one of the, the games that they own probably the most is The Sims. They need to come out with The Sims 5. I think that would involve people back in, right? They evolve that game into modern systems. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, just looking at this, what they have. The licensing deals, especially sports teams, are where EA thrives. And I don't see them really sticking to this too much or making originals. But maybe they could. Maybe they could pull out a... a, a uh, a sneaker sneak hit on us, Mike, a uh, free to play game that no one expected and, and maybe save themselves. But overall video games are becoming more expensive to make and uh, the release dates are pushing and, you know, stuff is just not coming out as what, what it used to uh, anymore. So hopefully they can right size that ship back in the other direction. But speaking of video games, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Wrath of the Mutants, a, arcade game that came out in 2012 from raw thrills is now finally getting a home console slash PC release this year. And you might be saying, Oh, the turtles arcade game. Didn't they just do the wrath of shredder DLC extension that no, actually this is an entirely different arcade game. So if you walked into like a Dave and busters, they would probably have this there that you would play with the turtles from the 2012 Nickelodeon show, Mike. And, um, you know, we watched the trailer, you watched it beforehand, you kind of brought up like the art style is wild to see today because we have so many other turtle designs out in the wild now, but to revisit one 12 years later is, is mind blowing. Yeah. I've been so blue pilled so aggressively by mutant mayhem. I just love that movie and art style so much. It is weird to see a brand new trailer for something back in the 2012s. Like, uh, I, my, my interest in turtles has ebbed and flowed throughout my lifetime, you know, obviously peaking in childhood, you know, diminishing as Peak, like, peaking you know, Michael Bay an- era. That's not like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, you have like anime coming in and other action cartoons kind of like filling in the competition, you know, and my, my general appetite for CG animation, you know, isn't that great. So this kind of era of turtles, I wasn't really super drawn to, even though I've heard the stories have are really, really good and people really like it. But, you know, I was just in my part of my life where I just was not interested well, in that. Yeah. So I'm sure there is a there is a nostalgia pocket for this game. One hundred percent. But just at my current uh, turtles um, targeting system is is not focusing in on I'm, this one. I'm trying to see here how many it had five seasons. So this ran the longest. So it's probably why it got the 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 actual video game and the consoles uh ran quite a quite a bit uh longer than most of the other ones other than the original so but it, it is interesting this this game being ported much much later it's running off an arcade thing that it, you know it doesn't look that good right it's very static cameras very you know much like the the regular turtles arcade but i will tell you the cool part about this is they are bringing back the original voices of the turtles to uh, from that era to play uh, to voice their characters over uh, in the game. That includes Seth Green, Sean Astin, uh, Mae Whitman, Kevin Michael Richardson, and Nolan North as well. So, like, they are actually at least not just, hey, we're doing a port, we're bringing in the voice actors to fill in some of those voice acting gaps along the way. For some reason, Mark Hamill pulled up when I looked at this, but it's not telling me why. He's hmm. like, what, what, what? I wonder. I wonder who it's Mark like Hamill Shredder was. Or something? Uh, yeah, I don't, or I don't like think he was. Baxter Stockman, maybe? Or yeah, I'm going to have to... Krang? He's not like a normal... He's not like a nor- on the list of it, so I'm going to have to look up the characters. But I anyway... Like he, I feel like he could do a Krang. Yeah, uh, Kavaxis, Lord of the Demo Dragons, oh. and Ruler of the Netherworld. Oh. All right. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, he was the main antagonist in Season 5. So, uh, yeah, which was the last season. So, absolutely. I mean, again, no no shortage of... of you know, star power behind this, uh, it had 121 episodes. So cool. But like this, this brings up to point something I saw the other day. Um, you know, turtles are now in Fortnite, So we have a Fortnite version. We have the arcade version, the, the pixelated version. We have the mutant mayhem version. Now we have the tales of the teenage mutant Ninja turtles animated show. Look right. A different version. I've mm-hmm. heard that tur- and, and what's the last Ronin coming out. I've heard that they're oh, going yeah, to yeah. lean into mm-hmm. a turtles, multiverse eventually to kind of bring some of these popular versions together. I don't know. I mean, 
there are multiverses in the Turtles comic books in the TV show from the 80s, Mike, if you remember. So it's not mm-hmm. weird because Crane comes from an alternate universe, but I don't know how they're going to do it. Are they going to do like Power you know, Power Rangers has kind of brought back some of the retro Power Rangers lately to, uh-huh. to be it. Because Power Rangers, I think, is just as big as Turtles again for some reason in the fandom. So I don't know how they're going to do it. But if you are a Turtles fan or have been a Turtles fan, I guarantee you one of your favorite versions is about to show back up somewhere, whether you like it or yeah. not. I just hope it's not in the movie, Mike, the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem sequel, uh, untitled sequel, is coming out October 9th, 2026, and I guarantee it will not be multiverses, but involve Shredder, but um, giving it two and a half years between releases makes me feel really good about this, Mike, that they are not, again, uh, what, what did Seth Rogen, they weren't... Um, crunching their 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 animators they're giving them time to breathe and do a good job and it showed in the movie so it sounds like they're giving them some time to breathe to make this movie right in the next two years yeah that that's great uh seth rogan uh unfortunately has a bit of a sordid past when it came to sausage party and the uh animators that worked on that movie i don't know how much he personally was involved or if it was just whoever ran that specific studio that The main studio worked for hired. I don't know all the ins and outs, but it seems like he is taking lessons from that uh, kind of uh, situation onto Mutant Mayhem. And yeah, this is the type of thing where I want it to take a while. And actually, the longer it takes, the better. Because by the time this comes out, if it does hit this October 6th release date, I will have a two-year-old. So I will will make sure I shove as much turtle stuff in front of their face. So, so I can take them to the movie theaters and watch yeah. this with them. So, so Seth Rogen didn't direct Sausage Party. He just did a voice in it. Um, in, I think in he was like an ex- executive producer. Yeah, but, but it says... He was they, definitely they, creatively involved. But they call out um, co-director Greg Tiernan as the problem. They were like, Greg, wow. co-director forced them to work overtime for free. So yeah, well, either uh, way, Seth Rogen yeah. was over there in the corner going like, if I'm ever in charge, I'm yeah. not doing this. Right, yeah. Lessons learned, but absolutely. Turn, and then you're also going to have two seasons of tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on Paramount Plus in between. So, you know, this story, it won't be like, oh, there's nothing for two and a half years between movies. We're going to have a little bit more. So I think that's cool. That's, that's going to flesh this world out a little bit more. They can jump forward a little bit and, and have some space in between them. Right. We don't need to see them go right into high school and start the movie from high school point of view. So, um, very excited. Uh, I need to pro- I probably might revisit that this summer, Mike mutant mayhem, watch a, watch it again because that, that was such a fun time to, to uh-huh. do that. Uh, moving right along. One of the actors I love to hate so much. It's Jared Leto. <laughs> and, um, he has, uh, somehow personally injected himself into the Tron threequel, Tron Ares, and uh, it is apparently filming, and we now have our first image from it showing off a red program without a user. So we get to... Uh, I love the Tron aesthetic, Mike. I, the, the old 80s um, aesthetic. I love the 2010 aesthetic. I'm going to love this 2025 aesthetic already. I can tell. Um, absolutely love Tron. The red is just killer. I love this red. I love the suit look. But boy, do I hate Jared Leto's name attached to this. Like, like <laughs> I have, like I've never been like this is my mayonnaise right here, right? Like um, <laughs> by himself, I I'm not this. Is, I have Jared Leto ick um, by himself. Um, but you know, put him in some some occasional movies and he can do okay, right? He Fight Club, uh, he he got the hell beat out of him, stuff like that. But like, I am, I'm on the fence on this. Uh, it's got a, it's got a huge cast lineup. Um, they haven't told us who's what, but this movie will follow. Ares, a highly sophisticated program who is sent from the digital world to the real world on a dangerous mission, marking humankind's first encounter with AI beings. Well, we know from Tron Legacy, um, Olivia Wilde's character was able to get out at the end of that. So maybe she stayed hidden. Uh-huh. Is this a reboot? Is this a soft reboot, or soft sequel? I don't know. But I love the goddamn aesthetic, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that worries me the most about this movie is are we going to date ourselves by leaning so heavily into uh, first encounter with AI beings, right? You know, we are at kind of like the tip of the spear when it comes to AI, and we just have like a very kind of singular way of thinking about it at the moment. And I just know it's one of those things where it's going to be, it's going to change so fast, so quickly that... We're going to have so many different opinions about it in the future. So I just feel like 
this is already like the script that's being written right now. I feel like it's already dated, right? You know, yeah. talking about the idea of like AI, because when we did it in the past, it was all science fiction, right? You know, Will Smith's um, I, I robot or like Steven Spielberg's AI yeah. movie. It, they're all talking about a theoretical future. But now that we're here, it just kind of feels like, oh, a James Bond movie where the MacGuffin is a GPS, right? Like yeah. G- there's it's so synonymous now. It's not even really a thing anymore. Um, I mean, I, I, I think some people are maybe taking the synopsis too literally and think, oh, we're going to be in the real world the whole time. The first thing I thought of was if anybody remembers the game Mega Man Battle Network, I love that game because there's two levels of, of playing in that game. You're in the real world and then you also jump into the digital world. So I think a cool version of this movie is, is both. You have like this action adventure movie that's happening in the real world and then it like you know dips in and out i mean because i mean if you're thinking about the internet like the digital world can be like literally anywhere it'd be cool to kind of see somebody have to jump into a system and then out of a system so i think there's some more fun things that you can do with uh tron in general i i don't think it'll it'll be all in there but i mean i think that's a way to make it a cheaper movie right like this isn't a a disney follow product that's like this is a jared leto and one of the producers of, I think, Tron Legacy are pushing for it. So they're like, to make it, you have to keep your budget low to show a return. And I'm worried that they will not be in the grid to sh- keep that budget low, if you will. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, well, I, I think we know Daft Punk isn't returning. So yeah. I think they'll be saving a little bit of money yeah. there on the uh, Well, there goes, there goes there goes any chance of me wanting to hear it. They're probably going to hire... Uh, you know, Danny Elfman or something. Hey, Danny, can you do us a Tron soundtrack? Uh, That'd be that would be wild. I mean, I have personally, I have no Tron nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. Uh, the movie wasn't put in front of me like you know the original Star Wars was when I was a kid growing up. Um, the the remake was you know it was you know it was cool, but I I don't think the the story was it's all a, that sequel, engaging. Uh, yeah, and it and it was like the first kind of like. Was it Jeff Br- Jeff, Jeff Bridges, Bridges or D- Jeff? Okay, I I get the the Bridges and the Daniels confused in my head. So that was kind of like the first like real de aged person yeah. on a screen. That was kind of weird. So yeah. I don't really have a dog in this fight when it comes to Tron. Uh, but the ride at at Disney World looks really cool, yeah. and I think there's one in china i don't remember where the other one is but i want to ride. i think it's france and and disney world are the two trons but i want to ride the ride and you are correct the aesthetic is really cool if you detach it you know entirely from the narrative so it makes rides fun so it it, 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 keeps the rides alive the the thing with the thing with tron is and i I think it always it always has something because like the first one was technically prowess right a lot of cg movie in a movie that historically we've never had a lot of cgi right um that was it may not have been a blockbuster but it has a legacy the other one mentioned the first de-aging which is now like every other marvel movie we have a de-aged character for most of it Uh um you know they really set some precedents or or set some really broke some early ground if you will they they didn't do it the best but they did it first and showed that it could be done uh for long periods of time so i think that's great but to me tron is one of those things where if you showed someone the circle or like someone wearing a Tron suit from either era, people are like, Oh, I know that's Tron, whether they've watched it or not. And I think that that's important. I just cannot stress this enough. I hate Jared Leto. Uh, so, um, yeah, you know, despite the fact that maybe Morbin time on Disney plus already, uh, for him, I just am not excited about him. Like ham fisting his way through this project. Did you watch blade runner 2049? Uh, not yet maybe one day <laughs> okay well he's he's in the, as a as a as a character without eyes who can see with his little robots uh around him so like i i really just don't care like i always see him for who he is not the character he's playing and that that's mm-hmm. rough for me so hopefully maybe they can use some of the suits the looks for for the trying characters the program looks to to obfuscate him if you will and make my experience a little better but um, <laughs> that's a personal thing We'll see how it works. I, I'm excited. I want to see a trailer. I think that'll that'll really tell us on what's happening rather than just the first photo, if you will, and a, a quick log line. Lastly, we've talked about this before. Jurassic World is getting a, a reboot, a sequel, whatever it is. Jurassic Park 7, I believe, is what it would fall under. Um, Jurassic World 4, what have you. 
Uh, and the new title, um, we've talked about this. What do we call it? What do you do with Jurassic World? You can't call it Jurassic World 4. You can't call it Jurassic Park 7. So the new title is tentatively, uh, through, through a rumor, Jurassic City, which would mean more of a places where people live along dinosaurs in these Jurassic cities, I suppose. Don't really have a plot. But one of the interesting parts about this is that there's already a 2015 movie <laughs> with that name, Mike. And yeah, it's uh, I believe it's streaming on... To be possibly uh-huh. it, it's one of those movies. Oh, I put uh, I put in the plot here uh, in, in the notes because, boy, does it not sound good at all, Mike. Yes, please tell me. So in this, a trio of sorority girls who are temporary Woo! guests after getting busted for hijinks after a oh particularly obnoxious party, find themselves trapped in the prison where these dinosaurs escape and go on a vicious rampage, killing ninety percent of the prison population, including the guards. Honestly, honestly, Chris, that synopsis in the hands of probably, I'm sure, a better director and a better writer would be really, really cool. Yeah. Because dinosaurs in a prison, that sounds, we're getting dangerously close to Dino Crisis, which is yeah. exactly where I want to be. But I'm sure the lawyers are going to have a field day in either direction, right? You know, if they go towards Dino Crisis, uh, I think Capcom owns that. We're getting sued over there. But if they want to do Jurassic City, I'm sure uh, they are going to flex very much. I mean, I don't see a, a trademark anywhere on this Jurassic City poster from 2015. So yeah. I don't know. They if, could uh, probably pay to shut them up. Be like, hey, look, here's but, some money that you didn't make back on your movie. Um, yeah, exactly. Quiet. But uh, when I think of the title, I don't necessarily think of a harmonious city. Right. I'm just trying to think of dinosaur disaster and the location right and uh i think a couple weeks ago i pitched uh i pitched it maybe happening on a campus you know just trying to think of a different location uh this seems to be a little bit wider in scope because we don't know how large of a city we're talking here like if we're talking manhattan i mean that could be kind of cool you know i didn't really like how the dark night rises uh sealed off the entire city and they were like uh under siege but can you imagine like sealing off kind of like a island city and then it's covered in dinosaurs well i'm gonna go the other (laughs) way like what if they've managed like hey we can't get rid of all the dinosaurs but we've given them like uh we're we're capturing them putting them in like a like they a give them jobs or yeah. are they bagging groceries give them nevada <laughs> nobody wants nevada give them nevada um so like yeah like well like they're putting them in a uh like quote unquote city if you, it's not a real city they're not taking over a city but like there's like they put them in this place and like hey we've got the dinosaurs like in this big thousand mile corral kind of thing in this Jurassic city maybe people start trying to visit it or like steal stuff i don't know i don't know how this works i don't know if i like the title even it's not really ringing to me hey this is something we need to be doing. Uh, I, I don't know. Are you sold on it? I, you sound more sold on it than I do. I just don't like it. It doesn't roll off the tongue. I mean, I mean, I just, I like dinosaurs in movies. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. and I just, I, and I just don't like that uh, for the last couple of years, I have not been very satisfied with my dinosaurs in movies. So I guess I like that they keep trying, but uh, I would love it if, to just bring in totally new creative direction would be really fun. Um, so Jurassic city, I'm trying to think like, I like the idea of the plot of Jurassic park three, right? Even though the, the execution in the movie are overall, you know, we, we have a talking dinosaur in a dream sequence. I mean, that kind of shows you the direction that that movie was going, but I do like the smaller idea of the plot of just like, we need to send in one person, or I guess it ends up being a small group of people to rescue one person in the middle of all this dinosaur madness and get yeah. out. It's not about the greater, you know, socio-political ideology yeah, it's of not the, we're should not dinosaurs are... mutant dinosaurs anymore. Yeah, it's just it's just about there's essentially a secret agent that needs to get their mission done, but dinosaurs in the way. Yeah. So I think that could be kind of fun if like there is a like if we're continuing off the narrative from Jurassic World, right? Let's let's kind of go with your idea of like somehow they've been able to kind of herd all of the dinosaurs in the United States. You know, you can't get them all on a boat or whatever and ship them to an island anymore. You know, the yeah. cat's out of the bag. So they kind of herded them into like one kind of abandoned city and then that's where they live now, right? Yeah. But then you find out there's something in the middle of that city, some M- MacGuffin. Is it a person? Is it a thing? Is it yeah. a technology? You know, is it a treasure map? I don't know. There's something in the middle there that somebody needs to get to. So they have to get like a ragtag team together, 
you know, to yeah. get in there and they're uh, like, so, I mean, and that's very, that's pretty basic storytelling. So uh, I think you have the framework there to like do something right. cool and not overcomplicate it with like locusts, you know, yeah. mutant locusts. Right. Yeah. So I, that's, yeah. I guess that's my rough. Yeah. Thing. Jurassic world was a lot of like, Hey, we were, we're breeding dinosaurs together that should never be bred or like, you know, just creating new ones. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. We've done that. We've done that for three movies, right? I agree with you. We need to, again, I think we, we said it several weeks ago. We need to strip it back to the majesty of dinosaurs as we imagine they were, um, and, and just have a good time. Like, Hey, the dinosaurs are doing their own. There's animals trying to survive, right? They're not necessarily, we're not breeding, uh, hitman dinosaurs, right? Like, Oh, this dinosaur only wants to kill people or it's too smart for us. Um, you know, mm -hmm. we just need like, you know, oh, you have to get in, you have to be able to see, but like, maybe the, the dinosaurs have like, uh, after time have created like their own patterns, right? Like, oh, this is the, where the triceratops migrate and like the velociraptors are over here kind of thing. And like, you've got to get your, like you mentioned the path through the city to something and we can't just drop you in. Like we can't mm -hmm. like, helicopter you in, in and out. You've got to do it by, you know, stealth and, 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 and by foot, if you will. Very similar, I would say, maybe to maybe like The Last of Us, the season of The Last of Us, right? Like it's like a, a journey across large country spaces, if you will, because they can't really go very far. There's, you know, maybe there's I mean, people who live in the Jurassic City, like, right? And like people who stay yeah. there, and like, oh, we don't want you here. And they're, they're, they're also fighting them as well. Yeah. I mean, I've blocked most of this movie out of my head, but this is kind of what, um, what was that? awful Zack Snyder zombie movie that came out Army on Netflix, of Army of the Dead. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what that was too. Just replace the zombies with uh, dinosaurs. You know, yeah. don't give the dinosaurs culture like yeah. he tried to give the and, zombies yeah, culture. Don't film it with know? a 50 millimeter lens uh, on your shoulder that you got at <laughs> yes. the cannon store. Um, don't, give, don't make one of them secretly a robot and tell us you're going to explain that later in a side quest. Yeah. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity with this as long as they again take it back to the basics the director for this is gareth edwards right he did the the godzilla he did rogue one he is uh you know can handle this kind of stuff i think on the scale but he's I, a he's a he's a visually stunning director for sure uh yeah. because he did that movie that i talked about a couple weeks ago the creator yep visually beautiful script was awful so yeah. just give him a different script yeah. somebody else write that please well, well he the, the original writer of the jurassic park the first movie is writing that remember so we, we have oh a, yeah that's right so we, we have that, that so so you know that person the first movie was not about mixing dna on dinosaurs but the 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 evolution and like how dinosaurs live in the wild they weren't they weren't out to kill they were just trying to live right and and, and create new life so i have hope but uh Studio interference always got to watch out for that. See what we're doing. So, oh, well. All right, Mike, that is it for this week's news. Um, anything else before we wrap it up? Well, uh, if anybody else is has the Mayo Ick yeah. or the Chris uh, Miracle Whip fever i was trying to think of something that had alliteration but i yeah, couldn't yeah, figure yeah. it out that's, that's cool. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I want to know the lines of our of our listeners um it always makes me think of there was a simpsons episode where homer walks in uh, and lisa's crying on the floor and and he's like that wasn't your mayonnaise was it because he just ate a jar of mayonnaise and i, I always think <laughs> of the simpsons uh and that's like an early like season like first five seasons kind of thing so mm -hmm. always always associated with that but if people want to know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at, my friend? Yeah, they can read my web comics at Life Rewards Risk or PickledComics.com. Chris, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Valdan87, V-A-L-D-A-N-87, or uh, Video Game Systems of the same name. If people want to know more about a show where they can uh, like, subscribe, follow, listen, whatever they want to do every week, where can they get them goodies at? Oh, all you got to do is head on over to SuperHeroSlate.com. That is where we host our servers with our city covered in dinosaurs. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts. You can get merch at superheroslate.com slash store. Uh, we love we love hearing from you. Like I just said, do you have the, the mayo ick or the... I, can't, I still can't think of something that alliterates with Miracle Web. If anyone can think of a positive alliteration, the Miracle Web, yeah, reach you, out. You can whip it, whip it good. Go on. <laughs> 
We love our super fans. So if you want to be a super fan of this show, all you got to do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, and we will be here every week, folks. That's right. We will 